If you're a busy, ambitious person, taking time out for yourself might seem like an elusive goal. But our next guest has a plan to help you find mindful moments throughout your day. Clarissa Constantine, owner of Constant Motion Fitness, is here to discuss the value of mindfulness and tips for incorporating mindful minutes into your day. So, first, Clarissa, tell us a little bit about what a mindful minute is. Well, so the word mindfulness, I kind of feel like it gets overused a lot. Yeah. It's kind of like a really popular buzzword, yeah. right? And we're hearing a lot more of it these days, and people think, you know, mindfulness is, oh, I have to sit down, I have to meditate for a half an hour, or I have to journal for 20 minutes. And really, I want to set the baseline for folks that mindfulness fundamentally is an awareness of where you are in the present moment, even if it's only for five or ten seconds. Yeah. But the piece that I think is the most important about it is to be non-judgmental mm -hmm. about it. You know, oftentimes, like you hear a, a, a diet coach or a physical fitness coach say, oh, you've got to be aware of what you're eating. Well, that's fine. I'm aware of the Cheetos I'm putting in my face, and I shouldn't be, and like all this like emotional lashing yeah. for it. Well, the reality is, I don't know, I kind of dig Cheetos. If I want to have Cheetos, I'm going to eat them, and I'm going to enjoy them. But if I'm mindful and I'm conscious of it, then the likelihood is I'm not going to end up eating the entire bag. Mm -hmm. I'm going to enjoy them for the taste that they bring to me for the next 10 to 15 seconds. And if I'm aware of that, yeah. and I'm mindful, for example, in my eating, then I'm not going to eat as much of the stuff that I would otherwise beat myself up for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, you, when it comes to mindfulness, it can be 10 seconds. It can be 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. It can be something as simple as sitting in the car and consciously going, hey, I wonder what kind of car is next to me. Oh, and looking right. to the left and going, oh, look, it's a blue Ford. Yeah. Or what's to the right? Oh, it's a silver Camry. And just being aware of what's around you. Mm -hmm. It can be as simple as pausing when you're walking from your car into the grocery store and thinking, what do I hear around me? Wow. That is something I would, I never really stop. I just keep going, going, going. We all do, right? Yeah. <laughs> we all do. And we're stuck, we're stuck in our phones, we're stuck mm -hmm. in our tablets, we babysit our children with tablets, which I'm not a mom, but I'm not judging, right? Like there is a place <laughs> and a time to use a, a, a screen to yes. occupy a child. But we never stop and listen to the birds in the trees. Right. Or to listen to a baby's laughter. I mean, there's not much more on this earth that's going to bring you more joy than listening to a baby, even if it's not your own just laughing, mm -hmm. or children playing. More often than not, if you're driving down a neighborhood street and kids are out playing and a ball comes in front of you, most of us are gonna be like, rah, 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 rotten kids, why can't you keep your ball in the yard? When in fact, why don't we just stop and look at the glee on their faces yeah. from playing ball, you know? So there's a lot, of, a lot of just pausing and going, hey, what's around me? And just carrying on and going, hey, what, you know, what can I, what can I adjust? What can I not adjust? What's in my control? What's not in my control? Mm -hmm. And kind of going from there. So I remember I did this, um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like a training where they taught you how to find all these different ways to almost like manipulate your mind is what I'll say. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that they taught us to do is go for a walk and count things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought they were completely psycho when they told me to do this for the first time. Mm -hmm. But when I did it, and then, so basically they send you out, they say, okay, go for a walk and count stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, one tree, two bush, three pebble, pe exactly, <laughs> you know, four car. And you can't focus on anything else mm -hmm. except for what you're looking at. And you have to focus on the counting. Absolutely. So I was completely present when I did that. Absolutely. And I came back and they're like, how did you feel? I feel rested. I feel relaxed. Mm -hmm. So there's two things to consider about that. Number one. That's a, a self-guided visualiza visualization or a self-guided meditation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, I can't sit still and I, like, you know, let go of thoughts, whatever. As soon as one thought is gone, here's another herd of them ready to come in. But if you give yourself a, a, a job, as it were, during that process, yeah. it's, um, it's amazing that when you focus everything in right there, you're not thinking about your to-do list or the shopping list or I got to go get this or I got to go do that or the fight with your parents or your sister or your husband or your wife or whatever. But secondly, you know, when we go to work out physically, trainers recommend rest days, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's a lot of word on streets on the street now about cleanses or like you shouldn't yeah. eat after a certain time, like give different parts of your body a break. When do we ever give our brains a break? Yes. <laughs> ever, <laughs> right? And, and we so, use them so much in our society right now. I mean, from watching TV, from 
you know, going to work and we're probably always processing something because we have brain jobs now, not necessarily physical jobs. Absolutely. Yeah. And that actually ties into a lot of what I do with, with coaching clients or like with, if I'm tutoring students is bringing mm-hmm. that mindfulness and that physical aspect into it. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Renee Ostertag, who's a phenomenal physical therapist here in Denver, mm-hmm. actually um, had a, a saying at one point. She said, we're a, a society of bobbleheads. Right? Like we walk around and we just identify from here up. We oh. only associate with our heads. We don't get into okay. our bodies. Yeah. Right? We don't feel that. We don't exercise that energy. Uh-huh. And so there's a lot of physical movement that could come in with mindfulness, like mm-hmm. a guided walk like that. Yeah. Or when I go running, I count my steps. So it's little things like that, stopping, you know, what what do you see around you? What do you hear around you? What do you smell around you? Yeah. And what do you feel in your body? Right. You know, an exercise like this that maybe is just stretching your, your wrists out yeah. can also be, hey, where's the pressure in my fingers versus where's the pressure in my palms? Mm-hmm. Are my shoulders forward or are my shoulders back? And just checking in with our bodies. That's mindfulness. That's just being aware of where we are in our space right here, right now. Yeah. Again, without the judgment, because we don't need the judgment. And as women, we're really good at judging ourselves, oh, yes. especially. So let it go and just be like, hey, what do I see? What do I hear Mm -hmm. in the right now? And it can be 30 seconds. And you'd be amazed at what that can do to minimize road rage. If you're tempted to yell back at your husband when he says or does something, because maybe your husband, no, I'm not, my husband's perfect, but, (laughs) right? But like just in any of those moments when you're tempted to engage with somebody, Uh having the presence to be able to step back can help prevent a catastrophe. Yeah. But one of the biggest things that we have to keep in mind is that we've got to practice these things when we're not engaged, mm-hmm. you know, when we're not triggered, when we don't have that stimulus. And if we're not practicing it when we're not triggered, it's not going to be available to us when we are. No differently than like, I'm not going to be able to go lift a car off a child if something happens, if I'm not in reasonable physical shape to start with. Right. You know, superpower is accepted. But you've got to practice those things. Exactly. You've got to practice the that mindfulness, mm-hmm. even if it's in 30 second or one minute clips along the way. Yeah. It doesn't have to be 15 minutes of meditation or 30 minutes. And that was something I struggled with for a long time. I was like uh, diagnosed with like with uh, anxiety about 13 years ago, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. And the first thing the practitioner said was, you got to go take yoga classes. And I was like, I don't have time in my schedule for yoga. Like, I don't have time to put more stuff in, in my schedule. Yeah. So I had to kind of go on a search of like, all right, I got to figure out how to manage this. Some of it's dietary, a lot of it's physical, but some of it's really just about the those little practices along the way to yeah. lower that, that level of angst. Yes. <laughs> Well, beautiful. Thanks so much for those tips. Do you have anything else you want to share before we go? You know, the only only other thing I'd like to share with Denver is um, I'm one of seven chakra dance facilitators, which is a practice that I've discovered. I became a facilitator last year, and it's a really cool moving meditation. Uh And it's just chakradance.com. And it uses music and and, um, guided visualization in a moving practice Uh um, to have some pretty cool insights into yourself. Sounds like fun. It is. Love it. (laughs) Well, thanks for sharing. Thank you. All right. 